Hey everyone, it's Chica, and today I'm going to show you how to use a rotary tool to cut your precious moments. If you've been following along, you know I like to take precious moments figurines and alter them into whole new creations. I always add paint, I usually add clay, and sometimes I cut the pieces. I've already shared a video with you about the three ways that I remove pieces from a precious moments figurine. There's some really good beginner tips in there, but today we're going to go in depth on removing pieces with a rotary tool. This is the tool I'm going to be using. It's a Dremel 4000 rotary tool. If you're thinking about getting a Dremel and you like the 4000, you should check out my separate video where I review this tool and all of the accessories that come with it in great detail. This comes with a lot of different accessories, but there's only a few that really work well on porcelain. So today I'm going to show you the specific bits that I use and the techniques for removing pieces from these figurines. Before we get started on any alterations, we have to talk safety. As you can see, I'm outside today. Grinding and cutting porcelain does create a lot of dust, and you do not want to breathe that in. So be somewhere really well ventilated, like outside on your porch like I am. You also need to wear some sort of filtering mask so that you do not inhale any of this dust as you grind. And then finally, safety glasses. You definitely need safety glasses if you're going to be cutting ceramic. You don't want any chips to fly off of here and hit you in the eye. Please be safe. One last safety concern I'm going to talk about. This is a very powerful tool. If it's strong enough to cut porcelain, it can cut your finger too. So be very, very careful as you work. As you are using this, you should not need to apply heavy pressure. If you find that you have sparks or overheating or you have to apply pressure to make your cuts, you're doing it wrong. Nice and slow and easy. If you're getting overheating or sparks or it's not cutting, don't press harder. Instead, double check and make sure you're using the right accessories for the job. Okay, I've got lots of examples here, so let's get started. Okay, first let's talk about the bits. A standard kit is going to have a lot of different items in it. If you watch my full review on this tool, I actually walk through every single one of these tips and tell you when to use each one for different things. They're not all going to work for ceramics. The ones that we can pull out of here that can be effective are these. We have two different kinds of grinding stones. We have these reddish brown grinding stones and these blue green grinding stones. They're both pretty powerful. These can work pretty well, but these are the ones that are the hardest and will work the best on porcelain, glass, and hard surfaces. So we're going to have these as a backup, but these are going to be our primary ones, again, that come in the kit. The rest of the kit, we're not going to be able to use. By the way, if your kit comes with a metal cutting wheel, you're going to be really tempted to use this. It seems like if it cuts metal, it'll cut porcelain. No, do not use this. This will cause sparks. This will not have the effect you want. Do not try to use this wheel. Trust me. As far as this kit goes, we're done with it. Now, in addition to these that I have pulled out of the kit, I have a couple other specialty ones that I have ordered separately. These grinding stones are diamond coated. These work great on porcelain. They come in all different sizes and shapes. I'll put a link below so that you can see what they are, but they have this really rough diamond coated surface. This is going to work great for Hardcore grinding, you're going to see this is going to be very effective when we're trying to get a lot off of the surface. The other thing you need is a diamond coated cutting wheel. Again, don't use that metal one that comes in your kit. It needs to be diamond coated. This will cut through porcelain, ceramic, no problem. Just wait till you see how nicely this works. This particular one, by the way, is on the Easy Lock Mandrel that came with my kit. So I just had to buy this wheel separately. I had the mandrel already with my kit, but if your kit does not come with a mandrel that has this um, sort of bat wing shape on there, then you might need to get this mandrel separately. So pay attention when you go to buy this wheel, make sure you already have a mandrel that will fit into your rotary tool. Okay, the first example we're gonna do is a really basic removal. See this little knob here on this bow? We're gonna get this bow off. If you watched my other video about cutting techniques, you know that sometimes you can use a chisel to snap pieces off if they've been attached separately. But this one is definitely part of the piece. It's not going to snap off, but it's just going to take a little bit of grinding to get rid of. I'm going to reach for one of these diamond coated stones and we're going to just grind that away. Now my rotary tool has this speed adjustment feature here that I can adjust to different speeds. You might need a higher speed to be able to cut porcelain, but play with it and see what works for you. All right, look at the progress we're making here. I've got that bow mostly gone. I only worked for about a minute on that and I got that down. This diamond coated grinding stone is definitely the way to go to get these bumps down quickly. Now I can do a little bit more here with that to get it down. So give me a minute and let's get that down a little bit smoother. All right, I went ahead and took that little ponytail off too. So I've got the bow and the bottom ponytail pretty good. 
So that's almost smooth. It's a little bit rough. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with these diamond coated grinding bits because they will cut through pretty quickly and I don't want to go too far on this. So I'm actually going to switch to one of my grinding stones and just do a little finish polishing here. This will go much more slowly than the diamond bit will, but it be, it'll give me a nice smooth finish because this, you can see this is a little rough. All right, see that? That's a little better. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is going to take a while on this, but this is what you do to get that smooth finish on the end. You can see it's getting a little better. So use these diamond coated bits to get your bulk down and then use the grinding stone to polish it off at the end. And that's how you remove those little bits. Okay, I showed you how to get those little bits off, but what if we want to do something bigger like this bow? If I tried to grind that bow down, that would take forever. There's really no point in trying to do that. So I have a better technique for removing bigger pieces, and that is to use the cutting wheel. So this is my diamond coated cutting wheel. It is a pretty expensive bit, but I'm telling you, it is exactly what you want for removing big things. So we're gonna use this to cut away this giant bow, and it's only gonna take us a few seconds, but I want you to keep in mind that when you're doing this, these pieces are hollow, and there may well be a hole under this when we remove this piece, most likely. So let's see. I'm gonna go this way, and we're just gonna cut this right off of the piece. Did you see that? That took eight seconds to cut. Here's the piece that came off. It cut it right off so easily. It did reveal a hole inside, which is what I thought it would do. And there's lots of dust and little chips. You definitely need to be outside. You need to have a filter and you need to have your safety goggles when you're doing this. But we did it. We removed that piece. So now we do have this rough edge here that will go back with one of our grinding bits and kind of smooth that down. Now, as far as what you do with this hole, it depends on what you're going to do with the whole figurine. If you're going to add maybe a hat or something or paint it, but I would just fill that with clay, just a little bit of clay and smooth it out, let it dry and do a few layers until you get it filled. Because obviously when you push clay down in there, it's going to go down in the hole. But if you do a little bit at a time, you should be able to fill that hole no problem in there. But pretty cool, right? I've also got this one. Sorry, her body broke, but look at these bows. A lot of people really want to remove these on the side or these on the top. Now, this is really going to cause a hole in here if we try to remove this piece. But we're going to do it anyway because I want to show you that it is possible with this diamond cutting wheel. So we're going to try to take this one off right here. Wow, that did a pretty good job, huh? There's a little bit down here in the bottom. All right, I did that real time so you guys can see that this diamond cutting wheel really does the trick. That metal wheel that comes with your kit that a lot of people are using is not going to work. You've got to have the diamond coated cutting wheel. So again, we've got a big hole in here on the side, but you can fill that with clay. Maybe I'll do another video on how to fill holes with clay. Um, but for now, we've got our piece down. And again, we've got these rough edges that can be very sharp, be very careful. So we're gonna get our grinding stone and just kind of smooth that out a little bit. All right, I'm not going to do all of it because that grinding stone does take forever. But you see right here, if you put in the time, you can get a really nice smooth surface and that's how you can get those rough edges off of there. So it's definitely a good finishing touch. Down here, it's still sharp because I didn't grind it, but right here, nice and smooth. So isn't she lovely? All right, I'm back to my diamond cutting wheel. We're going to do some more advanced cutting now. So we addressed bows, which is a pretty common thing. But what if I wanted to remove this plant? So Maybe I want to keep the pot, but I want to remove the plant. So I can actually do a cut right down in here. And let's do that one just for fun so we can see just how easy it is with this wheel. Again, this is going to throw lots of chips and bits. Make sure that you have a mask. Make sure that you have your goggles on. It's going to make a big difference. Your safety is very important. I mean, look at how fast. Isn't that amazing? And this is still in pretty good shape, too, if I wanted to use it somewhere else. All right, so we really stripped that one down, haven't we? We took a bow off of her head, we took her little ponytail off, and we took her plant off. So now she's ready for, goodness, she could be anything. 
All right, now we're going to go crazy and do something really advanced. By the way, I do all my experiments with broken pieces. It's a really great way to get a comfort level with your tool. If you have a broken piece that you know you're not going to use, I suggest you cut it like crazy. Practice with your tool before you do it on your real piece because it's a great opportunity. All right, so for this one, we're going to go a little crazy. We're going to try to remove this brim. Now, this is a very ambitious ask here. Um, I'm not sure what, why you would want to remove the brim, but this seemed like a pretty difficult thing, so I thought I'd go for it and see if we can do it. So my plan, I want to keep her face underneath, right? So my plan is to maybe just cut along here, kind of at an angle, and see if we can get this off. I'm going to do my best to hold this in a way that you guys can see, but my safety is very important too, so I have to be very careful because if this thing slips and hits my hand, it's going to cut pretty bad. So um, I think we're going to kind of go this way. So let's see what happens. Okay, things were going well, and I went a little too far, and guess what happened? Her entire face broke off. Well, okay, is that the end of the world? Maybe, maybe not. I think I can glue her face back on, but while I have this off, I'm going to go ahead and try to remove the rest of this piece here, because I think I might actually be able to fit it back on, and it'll be easier to hold. So let's keep going. Okay, these pieces popped off pretty easily, and now I have her face. And a little super glue, I think I could actually glue that face right back on there. So, is this a success or not? Well, it's an interesting situation, because if I really needed that brim to be gone, I have accomplished that. But it's going to take a whole bunch of clay in here and put it to support the face to put the face back on. So... Was it a success? Um, I mean, yes, it was a success because I achieved what I wanted to do, but it's definitely going to take some work. So if you're going to try to do a piece like this, you better make sure that you really want to remove that brim because it is going to take some work to get this back together. But I feel like this is still a good example to show you guys because it pushes the limits on what you can do, pushes the boundaries, and it, it is possible to get this down to what you wanted if that's what you really need to do. And actually, that's kind of cool with no face in there too. Wouldn't that be an interesting piece? Hmm. Maybe polish these edges up a little bit. I kind of like it. Why not embrace the hollow inside, actually? That's a really interesting piece. Okay, the last example I'm going to show you is this piece. This is the rest of this piece earlier from when I cut her bows off. People ask quite often about removing things from their hands. So she's got this little book in her hand. Can we remove this? Well, we're going to have interesting results here, I think, if we try. Of course, we're going to probably hit some hollow in there. We have to be very careful of her hand, but you know what? Let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can try. So the way that I'm going to approach this, since I want to keep her hand, I'm going to try to cut here first along her hand, sort of an outline, and then maybe a little bit under here, under her arm. We're just going to try, kind of try to cut and see what we can do and hope that the hand stays. Honestly, the hand is probably going to break off, but let's try it. Let's see. I've got my diamond wheel, and I'm just going to go very slowly, very carefully. I'm going to start right here and try to get that hand. I think I might turn my speed down a little bit and go more slowly and see if I get less chipping. Okay, there's my first cut. I've got it released from her hand here on the back. Now let's maybe try to go underneath. All right, we got a little more progress here. It actually looks pretty good on the back. I got the two back pieces off. Got to get this middle bit here out. All right, I got another piece off. There's that hole that I was expecting. But look, we're getting there. We're almost there. I think I'm going to get rid of the diamond bit, the diamond wheel. I'm going to switch to one of my little diamond grinding bits. This has a nice pointy end that I can get in there and grind those areas away. All right, I am pretty happy with that actually. Um, I got the most of the paper off. You can see her hand is pretty free here. There is a hole on this end, but that's not surprising because there was a big paper there that could be filled with clay. And that's not too bad. And I made really heavy use of this pointed diamond coated grinding bit um, to get down in here between the fingers and everything. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
It still needs a little bit of polishing. Maybe I could get a little bit more smooth edges here. But remember, don't push your luck. If you've got it pretty good, you might want to just stop because this hand could snap off at any moment. So pretty good example. I kind of like it. Oh, by the way, I want you to take a look at my work surface here. I used this black paper specifically so that I could illustrate just how much dust comes off of here. My hands are filthy. My tool is filthy. Always wear a mask. Always use safety goggles and be really aware of this mess that you're going to make. That is why I'm outside. Okay, I just showed you lots of examples on how I use my Dremel to remove pieces from my precious moments. Let's review what we did. First, we ground a little knob off the back of this here with our diamond coated grinding bits and then we smoothed it with our polishing stones. We removed the bow from the top of her head with our cutting wheel, so that looks pretty good. We removed this plant here with our cutting wheel. Then we went major and removed this bow from the side of her head, again with the cutting wheel and polishing with the stones. Then we went really major. I removed the edge of the bonnet, revealing her face, which needs to be glued back on, or this nice hollow thing inside. And finally, I removed the book from her hand. So you can see there's a lot of opportunity here to alter these pieces before you paint them. I would say the lessons you need to remember, there's going to be a hole inside. It's going to be dirty. It's potentially dangerous. Be very careful and use the right tools. It makes all the difference. And one last thing, don't forget to practice. Find a broken piece and cut the heck out of it. The more practice you can get in, the better you'll be when you do your finished pieces. I hope you found that helpful. And I can't wait to see what other altered moments you guys create. By the way, if you're new to our altered moments world, I hope you're in our Facebook group. We have an amazing community there full of artists who share tips and ideas and their amazing works of art. If you want more advice on how to actually use the rotary tool, be sure to watch my in-depth review video. I'll link to it below. And all these amazing tools and our other favorite supplies. Thanks so much for watching. See ya!